So, uh, my kids have been complaining all week that they wanted to see her. I, I really didn't want them to see her um, because she's been lying to them about the dating and the guys. And I convinced my daughter to let me come say bye. I was literally going to leave town uh, Saturday. So my daughter left the window open for me. Um, my son rode with me. And the youngest one was actually at home and sleeping. So my kids and I were communicating while I was there. My wife, I was trying to wake her up because I didn't want to start with two little kids that were sleeping with her. Uh, finally, she did wake up, freaked out a little bit because I was there. She knows I'm not supposed to be there because of the uh, temporary injunction. Uh, she calmed down and I just explained, you know, I really can't deal with all this. Uh, I'm just going to leave town. Years ago, I put a lot of money away. Offshore accounts, I was going to go and just live in the islands. Finally, around five o'clock, my two older kids are still outside. They're like, you know, we're tired, we want to go home. Um, I've been teaching them how to drive. So they took the two little kids with them and they drove my car back to my house in Riverview. The whole time, I didn't, I didn't understand. She didn't try to run out of the house out of the window. Uh, she took a couple cigarette breaks, and then uh, we had sex four times, you know, consensual. It wasn't forced, nothing. This is what messed with my head. And I think this is what broke me mentally was she's telling me she loves me, she's telling me we can work it out, we're having sex, but then she's dating, but she, then she wants, you know, to go forward with the divorce, so... I really, I really can't explain. She'll have to explain why she's back and forth like that. Finally, around eight o'clock, I was like, "All right, I gotta go. I gotta go say bye to the kids." And I said, "You gotta give me time to get to leave to get out again." And she said she would. I said, "Okay, I'm gonna tie you up again." And she willingly let me tie her up. Then she started mouthing off about this, that, and the other. I said, "You know, I can end this right now." And I just grabbed the pillow and put it over her face. And just listen to her and well, I was just being an ass and you know pretending like I could suffocate her. And I took it off and I started you know, can you just relax? Can you calm down? And she said, you know what? Why don't I just go with you? And so I said, you really want to go with me? You want to leave the country? And she said, yeah. And I said, okay. You know, it's said the kids will be fine. Our pastor and his wife could take care of them, or my parents, so the kids will be fine. And I said, really, they don't deserve either one of us, we're both bad parents, and she agreed. And so then we, we got everything ready. So I said, well, do you want me to stop the store? She's like, yeah. So I, you know, I go walk in, and I look out, and she's running around the parking lot. And so I grab her and put her back in the car, and I said, what are you doing? When, when she was running around, you saw her, did anybody see you go out and grab a hold of her? Yeah, there was a, uh, I think it was an employee. Did I say anything? No, no, he didn't say anything, but I think he dialed the police. Closed the door, got back in, and said, okay, you know, I'm not getting cold medicine. And I said, and I'm pretty sure he called the police, so I don't think we can go to our house now, so we're not going to be able to say bye to the kids. So then I took a meandering path. Uh, gosh, I, I can't even tell you the roads I took. I was going to go to uh, Little Harbor. And catch a charter. Did you have something set up already or no? Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah, I just pulled down this road. Uh, there was a little clearing. It looked like a construction company had some old, old equipment there. I parked. Parked there. And uh, we both went to sleep. Woke up. I mean, there was a house a thousand feet from us. Uh, and I'm sure people lived there. The lights were on at night. So you're under the impression now that she wanted to be with you or she was okay being with you? She was okay. She, she still wanted to go with me, leave the country. So then we talked. We started making our story on what we would tell the police. We uh, we had sex on Sunday. In the car? In the car. Um, I gave her oral sex. She had an orgasm. We had, we had regular sex. She had an orgasm. And I said, you know, I don't get it. We're together. Everything is good. Our love life's good. I, then we said, well, let's leave around like 5 or 6 in the morning. Um, we'll head towards uh, 
the first one, so let's go to Anna Maria Beach. So I think there's a charter I can get, we can get there. And I said, I can't live this life, you know. I said, so I'll, I'll lay my life down for you and grab my own knife and start cutting my neck.